Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of April 23rd through 29th, and I am filming this on Earth Day, so I hope that the resonance of this wonderful day uh, finds its way into these readings and into your experience whenever you're watching this. Right. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your in own intuition to go beyond the details that I'm providing. Okay. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And here is a Prince of Swords. I don't know what they're doing here. Let's put that into some context. We're going to use our Dove and Serpent spread, and as I lay these cards out, I want to just say if there's anything that you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments, okay? Continuing with the Dove and Serpent spread, I got some good, good cards here. Seems like a nice mix. Let's do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. I'm going to give it a shuffle, and we're not going to look at this card until the very end. We're going to leave it right over here. Hopefully, it will tie everything together and give us the confirmation, affirmation, validation, simplification maybe that we need at the end of the reading. So, we've got some major arcana. We've got this air energy. We've got water and earth. We've got some earth, water fire and earth. So it seems like it's a fairly good balance there. It's not exactly perfect, but you know, it's a, it's a pretty good mix. So I'm happy about that. Now we've got this air energy here, and we also have air energy above. Okay. On the path of the dove here. This first one is the, the prince of swords. It's the air of the air. Okay. This is, um, this is pure and, and steady air. Um, in some ways, this card, I think, is representing you. And I think that you've, I feel like you've been known to have a really good head on your shoulders, you know? Um, I think that people often turn to you for your kind of common sense approach to things, you know? I feel like you're very good at figuring out problems, not by making them more complex, not by overanalyzing and bringing in uh, so much data and not through complexity, but through simplification. Okay. Through simplification. Um, I think that it's something that you are always kind of, um, you're always in that energy. You're always in this kind of um, trying to find the easiest solution, right? They say that the simplest uh, answer is usually the correct one. And I think you're really of that mindset. I think that you have um, some things going on this week that might be a little bit challenging that might not lend themselves to such just simple and straightforward, um, you know, uh, rationalization or problem solving, right? Could kind of be a little bit of both. But I think there might be a difficulty finding that simple solution to things. And honestly, what I feel like we're looking at are some emotions. Now, in the reading here, we see just a little bit of water. We see the Five of Cups as a kind of immediate future, as the way forward. And then we also have this hanged man in your environment. Okay? So, it feels to me like a lot of this air energy and these major arcana are trying to get us to deal with this water energy that's right here. Now, our usual modus operandi, our usual style of doing things, just finding the simplest common sense solution, and that is usually the way, right? I don't think that is really going to be enough, or kind of a little bit alternatively. I think you might be finding it difficult to really simplify this situation, to really uh, understand it in that simple common sense not complex kind of way, okay? We're trying to apply a very simple and straightforward logic. Now, when I say simple, when I say common sense, that's not derogatory in any way. That is probably the highest compliment that 
the sword's energy could give you. The only thing that would be higher as a compliment, I think, would be the Ace of Swords, right? And that is, you know, the simplest solution, always very clear perception. I think that's what you're striving for. I think you really want to see things clearly. You want to be able to look through perhaps the muddy water to really get an understanding or an appreciation of this situation. But again, I think this situation is an emotional one. And I don't think it really lends itself very well to the activity of the swords here. Okay, um, So it might mean that just a little more effort is needed. Okay, It's not impossible. I'm not saying we can't do it. I think, in fact, this is one of the major aspects of the work. Is learning how to cut through this emotional water to get to a very simple, common sense understanding. To really break everything down into just individual parts, right? Get rid of everything that is superfluous, everything that is um, kind of unnecessary here so that we can understand what's going on, how we feel about it, what our relationship is to this situation, and what it means for us going into the future, okay? So I do feel like this is a situation we have this art or temperance card right here in the middle, I think this is a, it's, it's a complex uh, experience, a complex situation for you. Now we're talking about simplifying things, right? But this is a situation that has many layers to it, okay? I think on one obvious layer, you're being uh, challenged. Your air energy is being challenged. Can you cut through all of this emotional waters and find the simplicity, find the clarity, find the peace of mind, right? So you're being challenged in that way. I think this is also a, a learning experience for you um, based directly on what this situation is. Now, we've got the Five of Cups and we've got the Hanged Man, okay? So I'm feeling like this is a very very challenging situation for you because I feel like there's somebody close to you that you have recently lost. Now, I don't know, I'm getting this, I'm getting this feeling like there's a T name. I'm getting this feeling like they are an older parent, a grandparent, maybe o older sibling. I'm feeling like there's there's kind of a large gap in the age difference, right? Quite a, a large age difference here. Maybe a few years, maybe even longer than that. Um, I feel like you've recently lost someone. Uh, and if they have transcended, if they have ascended to the higher plane, you have my condolences. I'm truly sorry for your loss. I feel like this is a, a feeling for you of really going through the fire. And that's a lot of what this temperance card is about. This is strengthening you in that fire, right? The fire is not going to destroy you. The fire is not going to um, leave you scalded and disfigured and a mess, right? It is strengthening you, okay? And I think... Honestly, in your life, in if you look back over the, you know, decades of your life, you know, at least a couple decades, I'm assuming, you'll see that there were many, many occasions where you were kind of put into the fire, right? And I think that you slowly have been strengthened through all of those kind of return visits through the fires, like that Greek myth, right, where she uh, she is, is holding the baby in the fire to uh, give it immortality. I forget who, if it's, if it's Hera, maybe, I think. Um, it's kind of like that. It's the more occasions we're in this furnace with this art or temperance card. This is kind of the, the alchemist's furnace. The more times we go through situations like this, the stronger we are to deal with them, the more that we are able to hold on to um, 
our sword, we see this figure, particularly the Prince of Swords, holding on to that sword and is not shying away from this challenge or this experience, is not cowering and um, in defeat, but has been through not this particular situation before, but ones like it. Okay, And that's created a bit of a spiritual fortitude. So it's not like we're coming into this situation unprepared, right? We've been through challenges. I think that is the that is the message here. And I feel like this is an opportunity for you to do more of this fortification through this water element. Now we go from the fire of this lust or strength card in the past to this water in the in the future. I think this is um, this is us moving forward into these feelings and and dealing with them, taking our experience of the fire and going into the water, right? And if you know about metallurgy, it's you heat it up and then you, you have to cool it down, right? So there's a blending of fire and water. Now in the recent past, this is that lust or strength card. I think this is the strength that you've built up. This is the fortitude that you have gained through the trials and challenges of your life, of all varieties, okay? And I think that it has um, prepared you in, in whatever, whatever small way we could be prepared for a loss, right? Um, and I think that you have really made some great strides in your spiritual work. Now, you may not even consider it spiritual work. You may consider it psychological work or some kind of uh, healing or self-help or however we want to classify this. You've done the inner work, right? You know yourself. You know your strength. And you know that while sometimes life may seem like one challenge after the other, we have the two of pentacles down below. It could feel like your life is always kind of going up and going down, alternating between the light and the dark, alternating between pleasure and pain, joy and sorrow. I mean, it's just kind of something that you're aware of with your life, you know. While you are, you know, familiar with that cycle or that kind of reoccurrence of, of certain themes in your life. I think you are aware that this is strengthening you and fortifying you internally in your soul, in your psyche, in your spirit. And I don't think we can ever be fully prepared for a loss. Now, I do I want to stop and point out that I'm not predicting any kind of a loss or any kind of a a death or a passing on of anyone um I'm certainly not wishing for that. I feel like this is something that has already happened or that you're going through currently. Okay. And when I say that there is a loss or there is a giving up of something, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone has ascended to a higher plane. Uh, this could be a breakup, could be the loss of a job. It's any kind of a loss for which we are still dealing with these intense and fluctuating emotions. Okay. I want to make sure that's clear. Uh, but again, I think that there is, um, you have always had a choice in things. And I think that you have chosen to deal with things head on, to not try to brush things under the rug. You don't try to cower away in defeat. I think that you choose to do the difficult work. You choose to confront things and battle things with your sword, even through these experiences that are new. Each time they happen, it's a new experience. Maybe we're a little bit more fortified. Maybe we're a little bit more skilled with our sword, with our discernment, with our ability to cut through and analyze and simplify things, to really cut things down to their very basic units. And then we can understand those, assimilate those, process those, right, in small more purified, right? More lean bits. So it's always been a choice for you. I think you have a very, very interesting character. I think you have a very, a very peculiar strength about you. 
and that's that Luster Strength card here. I wouldn't be surprised if you had a very strong Leo placement in your chart. Maybe your moon, maybe this is your sun or your rising sign or something is in Leo. I think it's quite prominent uh, in your chart. Now I think what we're looking at this week is dealing with the fluctuating and the intensity of these emotions. This is the Five of Cups. Emotional waters are moving. I think in any given moment you'll feel one wave come over you, another wave goes the other way. And I think this is what we are trying to match and meet and confront with our fiery energy. See on the path of the dove here on the horizontal axis, fire and water being tempered in the middle by this art card, right? Um, and I think this is also us trying to use this air energy, making the choice to develop this air energy uh, to use and apply this intellect, this rational mind, this simplified common sense thinking to the intense emotions that we're experiencing right now, okay? So the Five of Cups. Now I'm still feeling like this is an older, an older person in your life. Um, I'm getting the connection because of the nature of some of these cards and just the, the impression that I'm getting. I'm getting the image of a clock. Um, I don't know if there's some kind of a clock, you know, like a grandfather clock or some, some kind of ornate or ornamental timepiece that this person had. Uh, or that's maybe in your house that reminds you of them. There's some connection there with, with a clock, kind of an ornate uh, clock. And I think that's being shown to me as a symbol of uh, what some of these emotions are like for you. Because the, the symbol of the clock to me is, is suggesting this idea that um, we feel like we didn't get enough time with this person. Right. And now I should point out to you that this, this loss, this giving up of someone, letting go of someone, it could be a process that has been started long ago. It doesn't need to be a recent kind of this week type of energy. Okay. This could be something that's, that's happened quite a while ago, but we're still, we're still dealing with these feelings, or maybe this is an anniversary of something, or this time of year brings all of these emotions back up, but the emotions are back up again. Okay, either because this is recent or because it's that the time of year again. Okay, and again, you have my sincere condolences. With the clock energy, it feels like we didn't get enough time with this person. It feels almost like we didn't make full use of the time that we did have. Okay, and I think that's why I'm getting some of these kind of suggestions of this time, this clock energy. So we're trying to deal with this, and I think the, the best way is the way that you, you know how. Head on, simplifying, uh, trying, to, trying to analyze how we feel and really break it down into simple, lean, easy to digest uh, bits of, of truth. Our own truth. I'm not talking absolute or universal truth. But the truth for you. What do you feel? How do you feel? What are the associations attached to these feelings? Right? Sometimes it's, it's just a matter of applying a little bit of this simplified logic to our emotions in order to really be, again, have that peace of mind, assimilate them, come to grips with them, confront them and accept them. You know, we're not trying to build a dam against the water, right? We're trying to meet that water with force and fortitude and strength and with a discerning mind, right? And I think that's important. I'm not talking about, um, you know, trying to intellectualize your feelings or trying to think from your emotions or feel with your intellect. I'm not talking about mixing the planes here. I'm talking about applying this aspect of our psyche, of our minds, of our, our intellect to the way we feel so that we can understand, so that we can get to that ace of swords. I wonder if the mystery card is going to be an ace of swords. Where we have that clarity, that understanding, that acceptance, 
right? Because I feel like this is a situation that we can't change, but we can change how we approach the situation, how we interact with it. Okay. Moving forward to the path of the serpent, we've got a six of pentacles. This is one thing that suggests this, um, this clock to me, this, this image of a it's kind of a grandfather clock, but I almost see it's on a mantle or something maybe. Uh, with the six of discs, this is, I think, you trying to make practical uh, changes, practical decisions, or finding practical ways to apply some of this new understanding, right? Um, this is what you could do in the external world as a symbol of this peace of mind, this acceptance of these emotions, the processing of these emotions to commemorate the, uh, the event, the time of year, to celebrate this person. This is a memorial. This is a, um, a, a tribute of some kind. You know what I mean? Some kind of a celebration of, uh, of this person or whatever. If this is a loss of a job, if this is a loss of a relationship, uh, what things can we do in the practical world as a symbol of our being okay, right? Maybe this is finally packing up all of the old clothes or books or whatever they've left at our house, packing them up and mailing them off, right? Or, or throwing them out. It depends on your situation. Uh, if this is the loss of a job, maybe this is... Um, you know, some kind of a, uh, um, a gesture in the external world that you're, you're ready to move on. You know, maybe this is uh, turning your focus toward, um, you know, rebuilding your resume, sending your, your resume out to other companies or reaching out, networking, or, you know what I mean, contacting, uh, making connections in a different direction, something like that. I don't really feel like this is work-related, uh, but I, I want to suggest that it is a possibility, right? Uh, this could be the loss of a pet. It could be loss of some plants. It could be the loss of a home or of a relationship. Um, loss is never easy. Loss is never easy. But what we can do is take what we have processed and turn it into a gesture. This could be a, a magical activity. It could be a prayer, a ritual. It could be some uh, sort of practical, magical application that you devise. Uh, you write these simplified, lean pieces of data, right, onto a piece of paper. You say a few words, you burn the paper, you bury the paper, you um, tie the paper with twine and you uh, let it sink in a lake or let it be carried by a river, something symbolic, right? Um, it could be any of those things. But I feel like that is a way for you to really approach the hanged man here, okay? Now this is the really big pool of water that we are, that we're dealing with. These, these cups here, this water is the, the emotions that are flowing in and out, they're fluctuating. These, this is the dynamic energy of the emotions, right? The hanged man is the source of everything. This is the situation itself, okay? This is the suffering that we are undergoing because of this loss. Again, whatever it is, I, I sincerely pray that it's nothing so severe, okay? But whatever it may be, I can tell that it's affecting you deeply, okay? You feel it as a loss. You feel pain from this. And this is also your acceptance of this pain, right? And that, that sounds strange. But we're not using this fire energy to fight against the feelings. We're using this fire energy to assimilate, to consume the feelings, to absorb them to use them as fuel, as strength, as, um, you know, as oil for our armor. 
So it's not about rejecting the situation or rejecting pain. No, we have to accept it. And the hanged man is very much about uh, willingly accepting a situation, even though it's painful, even though it feels like we're, we've lost something. We can't change that situation. We have, we can choose differently, right? But I think you're going to choose to accept it. To, um, to do what you need to do to process it, to accept it, to, um, to symbolically demonstrate that you have come to terms with it, that you have the peace of mind. And through this symbolic act, you are, you are demonstrating your intention to achieve that peace of mind and that acceptance. Okay? So, it's not so much about surrendering to the feelings, but accepting that these feelings are valid, are legitimate, uh, and having the strength to endure that as long as it may take, right? And this could be the, the grieving process that it could happen on a, you know, a yearly basis, right? This could be the, the anniversary of something. Um, and again, I really, I pray that this isn't resonating. I don't want anyone to go through this. But this is the energy, and these are the circumstances that I think everyone will, at some point, find themselves in life. The next card is the Four of Wands. I feel like this may be that, uh, that clock image. Um, it may be the anniversary of something. Um, this also is going to symbolize the, the kind of the, the dread of having closure right? Um, this is the feeling, because this is in the position of your fears, worries, your concerns, that we don't want to have closure. There's part of us that doesn't want to be okay, that doesn't want to do this symbolic act of letting go, of coming to terms, coming to grips, achieving the peace of mind. We don't want to do that. We want to hold on to this, because we don't want to lose the connection with this person, this place, or this thing, whatever we're talking about. We don't want to lose that connection, okay? So this is something that, this is the, the attachment is the biggest obstacle, I feel like, right? We could easily get into the water, um, but finding the way out again, that's going to be difficult because we don't want to lose the connection. We have an attachment to this person, this place, this object, this job, relationship, whatever it is. And we don't want to, we don't want to lose that connection. Okay. Now, the final card that I see here is the, the Hierophant. And this is, this is really, I think, the, the, um, this is the spiritual guide. This is your, this is your higher self here. And what is going to, or who is going to pull you through this is going to be your, your true self, your higher self. Um, and I think that all of this, this whole process, especially getting over this four of wands, this attachment, right? This not wanting closure. The only way to overcome this is through your self with a capital S. No one can do that for you. You have to do this uh, for yourself, by yourself, right? With yourself. There can be other people assisting you and supporting you, yes. Um, I hope at this time you are surrounded by friends, family, loved ones. But the only one that can do this is you, and the only way that we're going to get a strong sense of the purpose of all of this is to look toward our spirit guides, our guardian angel, God, goddess, deity, whoever is that representative uh, for us, whoever it is that we, it could be just your own conscience. Um, it, it could be um, through a religious practice, but it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be a spiritual practice. Um, this could be a very kind of uh, atheistic uh, experience too. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody is entitled to their own beliefs, right? 
but it is only you that can show you if there is any kind of silver lining here. It's only yourself that can show you that. Okay? And I think that we have to um, be open to the wisdom that's coming from our true self. Self with a capital S. Okay? Now, in the Hierophant card, there is this Ace of Swords down here at the bottom, and I think that is that is the, the Ace of Swords that is giving you that clarity, that insight, that discernment, that peace of mind, right? So there is a connection with that higher self, that kind of internal um, voice, uh, your conscience, um, your, your spiritual guide, your, your deity, whatever, whatever you trust in. That's where the clarity comes from. That's where the peace of mind will originate from. And I think it's that energy that's giving you the strength that we see back here in this Lust or Strength card. It is this uh, entity that is pretty much putting you, holding you in the fire, right? Like Hera did. Holding you in the fire to fortify you. It's all coming from from this, this entity, from your spiritual self, your true self, your soul, whatever you want to call it. So it's one of those kind of terrible situations that it does have a benefit for, benefit for you ultimately. But while we're here in this water, well, it sure doesn't feel like it, you know? Let's go to the mystery card. I don't want to end this reading uh, on a bummer, okay? So... I feel like this is a challenging reading. I don't like doing um, readings that are about loss or pain or, you know, but when the energy shows itself in this manner, that's, that's what we have to talk about. Sometimes we have to talk about the difficult stuff, you know, and I know that you're strong enough to handle it. And I, I know that this confirmation card, this mystery card, is going to be a celebration. This is going to be a celebration of, of life and of learning and of love. You know, it could be that through this loss and through these challenges, we really learn what love is. We really learn what it means to be, uh, to, to cherish other people and to be cherished. Okay, so what could this card be? Could be a six of cups, though I don't think, I think something major. We could literally see the death card here, but I think we've, I think we've already talked about, about that. I don't think this needs to be the death card. It's either going to be the ace of cups or maybe the empress. Ace of cups or the empress. Oh, there's the empress energy. This is a, this is all part of the larger plan for you, you know, and I know it, it, it sucks to hear those kind of platitudes that say, oh, it's, everything happens for a reason, or it's for the best, or there's always a silver lining. There's so many platitudes that we can offer somebody who is suffering. It'll get better. It'll get easier. I don't know that it'll get better. I don't know that it will get easier. I don't know if everything happens for a reason. Uh, it depends on what you think a, a good reason would be, or a reason would be. Everything happens. That's as far as I'm willing to go. And I think we can celebrate the simple fact that we are living, that we are here in a place where everything can happen. The good and the bad, the ups and the downs, that you, you're familiar with. You are. I think we can celebrate and cherish that fact that we are here in a world where everything can happen. Don't know if there's a reason. Don't know if everything is going to get better. But I know everything happens. And I think that is... It is a, a, it's, it's a mixed blessing there, you know? Because we can have the closure, we can... Uh, you know, symbolically move on from this situation. It doesn't mean that we have to lose the connection or lose our attachment to this person, place, or thing. 
Um, but it is kind of a, uh, a completion of the mourning process, you know. Now it's time to it's time to get back out there again, right? It's time for the the sunshine to come out and move these clouds out of the way. And I think this Empress energy is really a good reminder of all of that, you know, about how we can be thankful that we are here in a place where everything can happen. Anyway, uh, we're going to go to a place now where we can do the extended readings. And if you want to join me, and I hope you do, please click on the link that's right up here, and you can have, have access to all of the extended readings. This was your weekly reading, uh, Aquarius, for April 23rd through 29th, here on Dove and Serpent Tarot.